All right, this is No Excuses with Michael D. Leonardo. I'm your host, RJ Roger. We are live on YouTube today, Michael. How you doing, man? Very good. Excellent, as a matter of fact. Yankees, Yankees won today, five nothing. I think it was five nothing. Who? The Yankees. You know them? The Yankees, New York Yankees. <laughs> and that's who? I don't see. I'm more into, I don't watch any baseball. And, and honestly, when I watch it, I say, how the hell could anybody watch this? I can play it. It's fun to play. Me and my friends used to play all the time. But man, I tell you, watching it, it's like, it's like watching soccer. I like boxing, though. I love boxing. My favorite sport is boxing. Hold it up. He just, he just knocked the two major sports of the whole world, I think. I know, Stop right? Number one in the whole world. He just, we, that's it. Everybody's unsubscribing now, all the soccer fans. <laughs> and now you crushed all the American game. <laughs> you know how important baseball was? You know, oh, World War II, when there were spies, they would ask who Babe Ruth was, who he played for. They threw a baseball questions at the Germans to see if they were spies. If they didn't know baseball, they knew they were in trouble. They didn't know about Babe Ruth. Did you know that? No, you're, you're teaching me something. Well, you know, that knowledge is, is, is unending, as we know. A little tidbit. <laughs> but uh, I'm sure there's some aficionados out there who will agree that uh, that did happen in World War II. Yeah. Yeah, so, so you brush up just in case you go into World War Three. Yeah, I didn't know any of that, but I did know it was an important American sport. Yeah, probably, probably the most. <laughs> so depression and everything else, it was the sport. Sure. Yeah. So what's going on? Are you okay? How's everything going with you? Yeah, good, very good. Uh, what do you got there? I'm not drinking. You know what? I gotta start making announcements. If I get, if, if I take a sip of anything, someone says RJ's drinking, <laughs> and then one sip means I'm drunk. So you're hydrating. Hydrating. you're hydrating. You're not drinking. Cranberry juice and uh -huh. half water, half cranberry juice. Cause I, I don't like anything sweet. And I would never mix anything with alcohol because I don't understand anyone that can mix something. It has to be straight and brown. <laughs> and brown. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds a little racist to me. <laughs> White alcohol drinkers. <laughs> I'm fucking with you today a little bit. I know. It's all good. <laughs> See, you get the but you what you what you get is the, um, even if you were, you get the uh, convenient, you know, I'm not racist. I have a black partner. Yeah. <laughs> you get to use that well, now. No, no. You got to say, I'm not racist. I have a white partner. Exactly. We both get to use that. So I get to say a little bit more racist stuff about, about white people. And you get to say a little bit more racist stuff about black people if you ever wanted to or you want to talk about something I can, i'm not <laughs> so you know in other words i'm good in the gray area like your shirt you have on today it's actually blue is it blue it don't look like blue, no, you blue. Do stuff because your colors sometimes from what i see look yeah. a little bit different than what uh is is imaged really serious no kidding around but i like yeah. this it's very nice My thank comment. you thank you so Guys, the show today, we're going to discuss, Michael, people hate our long intros, but they... <laughs> I didn't talk to you today. I talked to you for about one minute this morning. Exactly. We didn't talk much today, so we're catching up, guys. Um, So, uh, guys, today we're going to... We did the show, as everyone saw, because it's everyone watched it. It got, <laughs> I think, 25,000 views the first day. Um, the Sammy DeBono discussion. We said in that show that we will come on and do a live discussion and let everybody ask the questions. So how we do it on Patreon is um, anyone, we do a show, then we do a discussion. So at, all questions are welcome. Anyone can say whatever they want. So any questions that you that you guys have, drop them in the chat. I'll ask them to Michael. Um, any questions that you want to ask about that show, Michael will answer. Even bad questions, right, Michael? Oh, I like them first. Bad news always first. Good news we can always wait on. Bad news we got to deal with. Everything in life. Deal with the bad stuff first. Good stuff's easy. So, Michael, one of the most common questions that I get, people ask me to ask you. Um, I know I talked about, I talked with you about it over the phone before. Um, and I privately know your answer. But I've never asked you publicly yet. 
Um, but one of the things that I, can't, I get asked all the time is this notion that's out there that John Gotti went to Sammy and told him, I want you to take the rap. We're going to blame it all on you and you're going to go to jail and I'm going to, and I want to get out of jail and, you know, help the family. But that John wanted to put the weight of that case on Sammy. You heard about it. Everyone's heard about it. It's debated by everyone. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. I heard about in the context of not then. I heard in the context of today. Yeah, yeah. Today, today, in the last X amount of time when Sammy has, uh, has uh, put that out in the public forum, uh, I've heard about it. And uh, and we're talking about a jailhouse conversation while they're waiting for trial, are we not? Is that the conversation? Yes, this happened in in jail in the meeting between Sammy and Gotti in November. Mm, I think, according to Sammy, he says that F. Lee Bailey was there, a, an attorney, and Frank Lucasio. The conversation happened. You know what we could do, like, like we always do, is let's get Sammy's account of that, mm -hmm. uh, put it up. And uh, I really bet, you know, I, I know where you're going to go with this because you talked about a couple of days ago. You, you try to get it out of me. I wouldn't even answer you. But uh, but it's, it's it's good. It's a good road to go down. I know there's a lot of people, including the Gotti's, wanted me to answer this. Uh, you've heard through the grapevine that the Gotti's wanted me to, to take this on uh, about this accusation. Uh, and I don't know if I'm ready to tell you the truth, but I'll let you lay the groundwork where you want to go or what the research that you have done. It's not fair for me to cut you off uh, on this because I know you're, you're anxious to talk about it, clear up history or uh, or facts that, or misfacts for that matter. So, uh, yeah, it was it was uh, some attorneys, uh, F. Lee Bailey, uh, supposedly were in the loop about this, F. Lee Bailey specifically, in front of the three defendants, Gravano, Gotti, and Ocasio. So uh, maybe you could play his video if you could get a hold of it. He gets all the hits. We get no hits. And if you give him, he gets all the credit. And let let everybody digest it, then then maybe I'll talk about it. It's uh, pretty well, sensitive I, subject. But what I want to do is, and if you don't want to answer it here today, you don't have to, but I do want to pre I want to put out some. I want to share something because – and in reference to your, and I even spoke with a long time ago, I remember I had a, I, I spoke with, I was talking to Angel before and me and her were talking about this over the phone once. And um, that was one of our topics of conversation where she said, you know, do, you know, do, have you talked to Michael about this? Does, the, does Michael really believe that my, that my father would have done something like that? So, which I never, we didn't discuss it at that point, but I do want to, so just give me a chance because I want to show you something. Now, Diane Sawyer interview, Sammy comes out of prison, okay? Does an interview with Diane Sawyer. It's out there right now. Everybody can watch it on YouTube. Diane Sawyer says to Sammy that, uh, so you sensed, quote unquote, sensed that Gotti was going to put the rap on you. Sammy says um, that, uh, you know, I could see what was coming, Blah blah blah, you know, and he said that um, his his uh, he did not say on Diane's story. The point I want to make is Sammy did not tell Diane that this happened. It was a big meeting, a big sit down. Everybody watched it, um, and then he in his autobiography. Now I looked into the book and I found something very interesting, which I want to read to you real quick. Mm -hmm. Because, and the reason I want to ask you this is because when someone dies handcuffed to a bed, Supermax, that served all of his time out. Um, I'm not a street guy. I don't have nothing to do with the streets, but for, for, for Gotti took his punishment every, and died a miserable ending. So to put this kind of charge on somebody <laughs> is to me, is just, so that's why I want to ask you about it. So here's my, uh, in Sammy's book, he says, um, which I want to read to you. This is on page 285 to anyone that owns Sammy's book. First paragraph of 285, okay? This book came out shortly after the interview where it was not said 
was not said on Diane Sawyer that Gotti did this. Here's the here's what he writes his quotes in his book. This um, that gets me thinking. I got no apologies and no severance. I got no defense. Okay, and then he says this. He don't say point blank to me. He meaning Gotti. Okay, so I'm just gonna say Gotti for the sake of reading it. John Gotti don't say point blank to me that you got to take the weight. That's a quote out of Sammy's book, okay? John Gotti don't say to me point blank that you got to take the weight, but now I can see that's what he's setting up. Now, it's a very different notion to say, I think, I can say my perception that's fair. If he wants to say that, you know, I, I had a feeling Gotti, that's where Gotti was trying to go. I don't think anyone will, they'll just say, okay, that's what he thought. But his thing he says now is totally different. All right. He says, um, he talked about, um, so the meeting that he says that he had with Gotti, okay, he, um, in his book is when he, um, and Diane asked him the same thing. Did you ever bring it up to him? Oh, yeah, but he said, you know, I, me and my big mouth, blah, blah, blah. But there's nothing I can find in this book where he says, Gotti told me to take the rap. All right. Um, now, Patrick Bet David. Sammy sits down with Patrick Bet David. And this is an exact quote. The video's online right now. All right. He says that. He had a personal meeting with Gotti. Personal meeting. This is the Bet David interview where he's with he's with Franzies and he's with um, uh, Bet David. Okay. He says he had a personal meeting with Gotti, and he said that he and this is his exact quote from that show that's on YouTube right now. He sits with me personally. And Gotti says, according to Sammy, and I quote, Gotti says, we're going to work with the lawyers and you're going to take the weight and I'm going to go free. Sammy says, I responded to John and said, do you want that, John? And he says, John responds, the boss has to be on the street. OK, now this is a complete shift from Diane Sawyer. And in the book, I just read the quote where he says, Gotti doesn't say to me directly that he wants me to take the weight. Anyone that wants to read it themselves, page 285, first paragraph of the book. Sammy's words to Peter Moss. Diane asked him, and she even says, you sensed it, which is, that's acceptable to sense it, to think it. But to say now, I had a personal meeting with John. And he said, we're going to work with the lawyers and you're going to take the weight and I'm going to go free. Do you want me to do that, John? John re replies, the boss has to be on the street. Here's my question for you. How in the world did Sammy forget this information with Diane Sawyer and in his book? Newly discovered evidence, I guess, uh, you know. You know, I, I, I changed my mind. And now what I mean, I changed my mind. I said I wasn't going to talk about it, but I am going to talk about it. But I only think it's fair that the first people we talk about this with is our Patronese family. They deserve it. Uh, they're member, they pay for membership there, and uh, they should have first crack at my opinion on this. And uh, I I'm going to try and get an attorney that was attached to that case, if I can to come out and speak on this. Um, and I have some extremely strong feelings as you could imagine. But look, this is an ongoing thing with Sam. It, it's what, what he'd done in the 90s, after he flipped the early 90s, throughout his testimonies, 302s, uh, and all the other evidence, because it is evidence. When he, when he goes on YouTube or goes on Bed David, goes on TV, these different venues, and it, you create a record. And there it, just the way you just threw up his record right to his face. Uh, it's undeniable 
So uh, do, do stories change? Do they morph into something different? Um, yeah, I, I will get into it. Uh, but Patriot, the Patriot AZ people will hear it first, if that's okay. And um, like I said, I want to have more facts. I want to get into it a little bit more and have more facts when I speak onto it. Um, well, let me ask you the second part to this. This <laughs> is something totally different, but I want to ask you one more question about this. Uh, In that same interview, Sammy says, you know, if Gotti would have came to me at any point in those 11 months and just said sorry, I'd probably be doing life in jail. Said if he just got a sorry, because that meant a lot to him. Sorry. I'm sorry, John. I'm sorry, Sammy. That was important for Sammy to receive that. I'm sorry. And I this so I'm curious as to what you think about that. And the reason I'm asking is because, man, for a sorry to have so much importance that you wrote and do life in prison for, and I'm sorry. It would just my mind would just make me think, man, Louis Melito would have had a little bit more value in your heart. Michael DeBat, Nikki Shabetta, all these things would have had a different. If if an, if I'm sorry carry so much value, I think those people carry a lot of value or carry some type of a value. So I guess my question is, do you believe that? <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, you, well, you listen to me. Well, you just read my mind because I was going to allude to certain people. I'm sure said that on Sam. I'm sorry, I screwed up. I don't think sorry, sorry carried that much weight. Um. I'll get into it so for me to think about and talk about. Um, like I said, I just want to share it with our uh, Patreonese people first. Uh, and I know there's people out there that have been asking me to and asking you to come out, including the Gottis, for me to come out and give my opinion on it or and or facts that I may be able to share with this. I have a very strong opinion on it, and I'll say it. Just so we're exactly clear, because I don't want people to, you know how the, this YouTube thing goes around here. People will say, oh, my God, this is, I've already been, <laughs> it doesn't matter. But what Michael's referring to is a conversation I had with him. I had a discussion with Angel about something that was unrelated, completely unrelated. And during that discussion, when Angel and I were talking, Angel said, do you ever plan on asking Michael this question about, um, what what um Sammy is these claims about Sammy, and that's what and and I called Michael and brought it up to him. So that's what that's what Michael's referring to. Um, now, anyone that has questions, please drop them into the chat. We, we are we're we're doing this live um for you guys. So if you guys have any questions, please drop them. I'll ask them to Michael. This show will be as short or as long as the as the questions that we get. Um, in the meantime, while I'm waiting on questions, Michael, I pulled some questions that were good questions that we did, some uh, that came out of Patreon, but I think they'd be worth uh, worth me asking you here. Um, my first question: Are the feds were the feds only concerned with senior at the time? John Jr. wasn't mentioned much or at all by Gravano in a court testimony. Why was that? Gravano liked John Jr. and didn't want to hurt him. Feds weren't interested in John Jr. I mean, were the feds not interested in John Jr.? And was there really a son for a son deal? Well, I, I never heard that question before. This is the first time you're giving it to me. I don't remember answering that on, on the uh, Patreon. It was one that I that I have received from, that I saw on Patreon. Yeah, so I just figured out it was a good question that came, someone sent over to me. Didn't Sammy do a video slamming Jr.? He did a sl He said he didn't deserve to be there. He didn't know what he was talking about. He was a dummy. He couldn't get anybody killed. Uh, he only got there because his father. He he, he slandered Junior pretty good. So I don't know how much he liked him. I doubt he liked him, according to him now. Um, did the feds want to get Junior? The feds will, will lock up your your pet if it had anything to do with causing ocean. Never mind the boss's son, who was the uh, heir apparent. Heir apparent. Yeah. No, the the feds wanted John Jr. They had him. They taste they tasted him in their mouths, and uh, and they would have took him in a minute if he found, they found him culpable in any kind of crime. Uh, so I don't I don't believe that to be true to be left out. Now, uh, did I answer the first two parts of that question? Those questions, and also the uh, 
the deal, the son for a son deal. Yes, I believe Gravano inadvertently admitted that recently, uh, even though I heard that in the street from uh, Sammy's brother-in-law, Eddie. He says, he, Sammy, uh, you know, uh, was a son for a son deal. Eddie told me that. He would leave John Jr. alone, not talk about him, if they left Gerard alone and not hurt him. Not there was intention to hurting John, uh, Gerard. Uh, that's a whole other show I'm going to do on this nonsense that the Gravano family was in trouble. That's a lie. So, and I could clear that up real easy. Um, and and they know that the family knows that. Um, but is there any other elements to that question? I know it was like a multi-question in there. No, that was the two main questions. Was there a son for a son deal? And were the feds at the time not interested in John Jr.? Well, doesn't Sammy put him in the Louis de Bono murder now? I don't think he does. It was 302s. He says, he did a show and says Junior couldn't handle it. And Junior's crew couldn't handle it, right? Bobby Boreal. Who wound up killing him? Bobby Boreal. So there's many, much court testimony about that. Junior was charged later on with that murder. So Sammy did leave Junior out. I don't believe I've ever read anything about Junior and Sammy's stuff. It could be there. It just means I didn't see it. Uh, but now he's he's willing to speak on it, sit being, being Gravano. So uh, things have changed, like I said, uh, with this uh, F. Lee Bailey stuff, with a lot of stuff, that a lot of these murders, the cause and effects of why people died. Uh, a lot of Gravano's narratives have changed. And uh, again, one of the reasons why I'm here today, uh, uh, trying to correct all the misinformation out there on this. Next question, and I think this is a this is a good balanced question that's, that that is worth answering. Um, couldn't you make an argument that the majority of the people in this life, especially during this era, were the same way as Sammy, and if given the position op and opportunity, they would have acted similar to fatten their pockets and position, and maybe Sammy just played the game better. Is it really a game when you're dealing with life and death? No. There would be anarchy in every family all the time. People would be getting slaughtered to take the boss's position. People died. This wasn't a game. Maybe that's his depiction where he keeps keep saying, I play chess, everybody play checkers. Well, that's a pretty devious way to look at that life and your brother's and your best friends that you kill. Is that, are they your, your best friends and your relatives stepping stones? Is that the game? It's not a game, it's not fake, it's real life. So I'm saying it with a smile, but it's really a sarcastic smile right now. Um, did he play the game better? Um, well, if you're looking from the outsider version, he's alive, right? A lot of people are dead. John died in jail. A lot of other people died in jail. Uh, did he escape, run to Arizona, get his whole family pinched? Is that part of the game? Is that part of his chess match? He's good at chess, I understand, right? According to him. But is that was his family involved in the chess match? Did he sacrifice them for the game after the cause of your life? Uh, you know, people, you got to wake up over there. I don't want to insult anybody, but how do you fall for this narrative with this guy? It wasn't Cosa Nostra. He's a, he's a criminal. He's never going to get out of his blood, ever. Look at the way his demeanor, the way he speaks. Adios, motherfucker. That's the way he talks to people out there. A million people. What's he got, 500,000 people? Adios, motherfucker. He since cleared it up. Uh, he don't say that no more. Now he throws a kiss like Jimmy Calendra. Throws kisses. Uh, so he's cleaning up since we came on there. And uh, he's cleaned up a lot since we've been. He don't sit in hell no more, does he? The red light and all that other stuff. Ominous music and all that. I don't know. But look, I, I, you know, it, it, the more I, I think about him and the more his life, which I know a lot of it, 
and I, I look, I'm not comparing myself to him being better or worse, but to say that everybody in the street was that way, it's not. It, 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 look, look at all the guys that are successful in that life that died in their beds or became millionaires. There's plenty of guys running right now in the 70s, 80s, 90s. There's, a, there's one guy out there maybe close to 100, if he's not 100 already, that lived a great life, never went to prison. They didn't have aspirations to be boss. They didn't have aspirations to be the, the, the top GM or, 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 or become a, a, a poor Castellana and sit in a mansion on Toad Hill. Not everybody has those aspirations. They're comfortable with the brotherhood, earn a living and get through life that way. That life, not life in general. So, you know, these, these narratives about him being a better manipulated, you know, devious than anybody else. Yeah, he's, he's pretty good. So was Gas Pipe, right? Gas Pipe had books, books and records waiting for the FBI when they showed up. What was on his mind when he killed, well, I don't know, 30 people, whatever he killed? Everybody was a rat, according to him. I don't know enough about Gas Pipe to get into all his stuff unless I read it, uh, but I do know some things about him. Same thing with Scarfo and a lot of other guys. You've got the, the Scarpers of the world and uh, a lot of other people out there, the whitey bulges that took advantage. Were they all better chess, chess players? I don't like that term. Uh, they could use it. But, uh, you know, it, it's look, I take this very personal. I speak passionately about this because I knew these people. <laughs> I knew these human beings that were alive that died for nothing. If they die for a reason, right? But somebody's reason doesn't make it a good reason. There's always a reason, but does it make it the right reason? It's somebody's agenda. Did Sammy have to be boss? Did John have to be boss? No. They wanted it. And that's part of the, the, the game that Gravano says. I play chess. Now, but John lost his life, cuffed to the bed. He kept to the oath. Doesn't make him a good person, but it makes him admirable in that life. All the mistakes he made, John. Here we go. John made a lot of mistakes, and I will get into them. I've had it read. I've done it already at some length. There'll be more. We all make mistakes. But one thing John did, he didn't rat and play chess. Is that the answer? You play chess to give up your boss, another boss? You kill one, you, you gave one up, and virtually killed him tied to the back. So all these other people, were they pawns on your chess game? Mike the Bat, Eddie Garofola, baptize his daughter. Within a year or so, you murder him? I, I don't want to keep going on. Ask me another question because I'm getting hyped up again. And uh, I don't want to bring depression to this board right now. <laughs> um, Yankees won today. <laughs> they did. Okay, next one. Let's go. So one of the common things that we're getting, can't even sit here and deny it, we read every comment. So if you leave a comment, we read it. Some of the comments, and I see more and more of them, that you're that we are becoming, uh, we're attacking Sammy. How would you respond to we are attacking him? Well, Sammy was an integral part of the Gambino family. Sammy was an integral, integral part of my life. I was, again, I looked up to Sammy. This is, I don't know how many times I have to say this to lay this groundwork, but Sammy was a guy I idolized. I looked up to, we had a lot of fun together. We had a lot of laughs. Our families are close till today. So uh, this is not, it, this is, seems like an attack. It's an attack on what he's saying. It's an attack on his character. Yes. Because he's, He's changed the narrative again. He keeps changing it. And why shouldn't somebody out there, besides the Gottis, and it's not it's gonna fall flat from coming from the Gottis because the father went to jail and died that way. So uh, it's gonna fall flat, their argument. Their argument may be legit. Absolutely, but it's a self-serving argument because of the father died on his testimony. Not really his testimony. John died for his own words, but by Sammy Flip and hurt him. So now I understand why uh, this this stuff is really important to them about uh, John wanting to basically rat 
on Sammy. That would be a rat move if John did that, which he did not. So, and again, I'll get into that detail. But this is an attack on Sammy. It's an attack on everything he's saying, which sounds maybe the same. But uh, I didn't come on here to uh, spend a lot of time with Sammy. I have a lot of things, a lot of different people we could talk about. But he keeps giving us ammunition. Every video he does, there's something in there. I, I, that somebody said, I scratched my head. I said, this guy kidding me? Where did he get this one from? Yeah, he's just... He's a wealth of not. I could do a show after show after his show, but I, I don't really want to do that. But there's certain things that I need to go down and clear history, especially the murders, people who lost their lives. Yeah, someone left me a comment yesterday and it said that I'm not a good guy because I am attacking an 80 year old man. <laughs> Just yeah. me, yeah. me. <laughs> So. Meaning the 80 year old man who wants to still dig people up and shoot them in the head, dig them back up because they're dead already. He wants to dig them up and shoot them again. He didn't shoot them the first time, but he wants he wants to dig them up now and shoot them. That's the old man. Yeah, Is that what you're talking yeah. about. Okay, it's the okay. guy. Who, it's the guy who wanted you to come to Arizona so he can show you what these can do. Yeah, remember uh, the 80 year old guy that wants to fight us, or I shouldn't say me, probably not me, you. Um, but you're my partner, but. Um, but I get it. People to have a comment to say about me that I'm that I'm not a nice guy because because <laughs> yeah, we're talking, well, about, look, this, we're talking said, about this subject. <laughs> yeah, and and that's another. Thing. He wasn't only talking about me. There's other subjects or, or other matters he mentioned that that wasn't me. He couldn't have been referring to me. It was impossible to refer. Some were about me, but he wants to fight everybody. The, the little eighty year old man. I mean, it's it's ridiculous. Here's a guy who just told another fabrication. Uh, he made up, he made up a whole story what he was going to do to gas pipe. I want you got to post that for these people. You have to let them go look. He got he got a lot of hits on that. He must be very proud of that that story. It was pretty good. They really they should make a movie about it. Without being sarcastic, the guy is good. It's good storyteller. This hypothetical what he would have done to gas pipe. Or was planning to do the gas pipe. Of course, it never happened. This is the guy who wants his, to taste his blood and everything, gas pipe's blood, and the very descriptive on how he was going to kill the gas pipe in prison. He was going to have gas pipe sit between his legs on the stairs, I think, and cut his throat. Slash. You just got to go watch it. It's, if, if you like, like Freddy Krueger or something like that, or Michael Myers, <laughs> great stuff. Great stuff. So this is the old man you got attacked for. The guy's still talking that way. The guy wants to kill everybody. Even if they're dead, he wants to kill them. So this is the guy we're talking about. So next question. Um, when me and you met, we met, I made a show on Black Handprint that made its way to you somehow. Mm -hmm. And then I started talking with your son for a couple of weeks. And then, I saw, and then me and you made contact approximately how much time you think uh, went by between the day we met, talked the first time, and then when we finally agreed to do a show? Several months, would you agree? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. About three months, at least. Okay. Now, but it didn't take me long to ask you to do something together. I asked you about talking about a book. Maybe the first week, I asked you to come on my show, blah, blah, blah. Early. You kept well, saying that. You want to give me ten thousand? Okay, I wasn't going to say that on there, but how, how much money did I offer you? Ten hammers, ten thousand. And to come on Black Handprint and do a sit down, a long form sit down discussion with me. And for me, ten thousand dollars is a lot of money. I wouldn't have been able to eat the next morning. <laughs> but you turned it down. Um, and said, "Well, I, did you turn it down?" Let me ask you that. Yeah, unequivocally. Yeah. Okay, and. And then, um, so then even when, I guess I put it this way, I couldn't get you to just want to come out and talk. You did not want to come out and talk. Mm -hmm. um, we were friendly, had a friendly relationship, um, talked almost every day. But you said no to the book I asked you to do. You said no to the interview I asked you to do. Um, and I couldn't get you to do it. 
Um, and then finally, you told me well, a week getting something. You wanted me to do a project in New York, right? You want me to shoot yeah. in New York. Yeah. Yeah. So now, I, was a, I had a team of editors and people who, and we want to get a location, fly you in, sit down, film this whole thing. And right. you said, and then you pulled the plug, no, don't want it. Then we started talking more personally. And then you said, I asked you again. And you said to me, and I want you to confirm this. After you finally agreed months later, you said, RJ, I don't need, and I said, Michael, I'll, I'll still pay you the money. Just let me do a sit down with you. You said, I don't want your money. You said, I don't want to be in your pockets was your exact words. You said, but, and you gave me a reason. And you said, but let's partner up on something. Let's, let's come together. You had, and we'll work together on a possible doing something together. Not on black handprint. But you told me you could offer me $10,000. i am going to tell you no. If you don't agree, if we don't do this, nothing matters. And you had a reason for why you wanted to come out and talk. Or what prompted you? What, what really got you gone? And I still haven't been getting ready to ask you, haven't been able to ask you on air. I have asked you, but you won't answer it. And you said you want to, there'll be a time that you'll say why. Yeah. I know the answer. It'd be unfair for me to never tell you. Can I ask you, are you ready to answer as to what made you? Remember, guys, Michael has no YouTube presence. He's probably the, the guy who has the most untold story. He'd been out of the life for 21 years by the time him and I made contact. The only thing he's ever talked was two small channels, just one, Gary Jenkins, very small channel and did something with me it, even when youtube was booming with mob content and when i talked to you didn't want to come out are you ready to give us the answer as to what made you come out and when and want to start talking and it wasn't just because i'm good looking and i'm charismatic <laughs> no not yet i have uh, a lot more things to say first but yeah there were there were several several things several components that went into me doing this. And, um, you know, to me, it was, a, 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 I, I took these things personally. Uh, it, didn't, it wasn't me personal, but I took what was said by Sammy personally. And uh, I used that as motivation to do this because I'd, I'd rather not be on here. Uh, I have fun doing it now. I seen the, the, the reaction from the people coming in, which is, unexpected um, on uh, on my part. I never thought it would be so overwhelming, like a 98% approval rating uh, by YouTube's numbers. And our Patreon is 100%. So, uh, yeah, I can't do it right now. I have to, there's so many more things I need to say first. And um, some people, I just have to die a death of a thousand cuts. <laughs> <laughs> okay I won't push it yet question from a viewer would you ever sit down with Sammy no you, uh, let me answer that because I, I got I, I've been answered that do you really think that would be a sit down Michael Francesi who's a gentleman we put up one you can find, I guess you can find them all over YouTube, those interviews. But there's a second part of that. I think it's part three, two and three. The end of part two, going into part three. Do you really think you could reason with a guy who can't be reasoned with? He, was, he lived his life not wanting to hear the other side. He lived his life. Michael had everything good to say as far as goes to North Street. Yeah, Michael did cooperate. He wants to push back that he did. And that's enough. It, what do you want the guy to get on his knees and start confessing? You, know, you didn't have a collar on. You're not, you're not a priest in a conf uh, confession booth. If that's his position and flip, that's it. He says he broke a murder. That was enough. But you could see that Sammy wasn't happy the way Michael was answering. The guy's a gentleman, like I said. And here we go. The real Sammy comes out. Right? Now, from what I understand, Sammy supposedly admits... Most of that was staged, that Patrick about David show. I won't stage anything. I won't sit with him because it won't be a conversation. It would not be a debate. It would not be a fact-finding or misunderstanding of facts and events. 
more events. You can't reason with this guy. There's nothing to reason with. He's still an angry person. He still has evil in him. There's no, there's no way you can have a debate with him. If he did that to Michael Vincenzi and that was set up, do you think I, I'm going to sit with him? Look, Sammy Gravano has a lot of class. Who bad it's all low to do that to that guy on that show where the world is going to see it. He can never sit with me ever. Nothing is stage on my end. Not going to happen. No money. Can't be compromised. Put that on the record. Um, I'm going to answer this. Xavier James says that I think that the Gotti's told him to do it. I just want to respond to that. Who's that? Who told I him? Got, yeah, it's, no, yeah, it's Xavier. So I want to answer this. Yeah, who's he saying told who? Who's to him? I guess he's, I'm, I'm taking as he's referring to, uh, to us. Well, let him answer. Let him answer. Can I, well, no. Xavier, Xavier, please write back in, but I will answer this. I'll say this. One, Michael and the Gotti's have not had zero communication with each other. Because I'm, I'm so sick of hearing these stupid claims from everybody that we're like being paid by the Gotti. Secondly, I've been accused even on Black Handprint that I pay, I, I get a check from Angel Gotti or a check from the Gotti's. If I have would ever do something so slimy, okay, so unsubscribe from every channel, both my channels, and never watch me again because I am the most, I am the biggest liar and manipulative person on YouTube. Um, secondly, I've had two phone conversations with Angel Gotti. That's the only Gotti I've ever spoke with. I had two phone conversations with Angel Gotti in two years of being on YouTube, okay? One had nothing to do with uh, anything to do with nothing with this channel, okay? And the second one that I had with Angel was a general conversation. And the only conversation, and the only discussion that we had about this channel was of something that was going on on her end. And, and, and just in a general back and forth, she said to me, will you ask this question to Michael ever on your show? That's it. That's the only discussions. The Gaudis are not involved in our channel. We don't get paid by the Gaudis and we don't kiss the Gaudis ass. It is possible sometimes that a, a guy could just like his boss. Michael has a good relationship, had a good relationship with John Sr. and liked John Sr. That's okay. You can answer that, Michael. <laughs> No, it's, it's, uh, it's something that occurs. You can see people thinking that, uh, you know, behind the scenes stuff, because that's what this is. A lot of it's about. Look, I had somebody ask, asked out on their channel. They made a challenge to me, Lee Cole, that I, I should go after a light. I, I, a light stopped by. I'm, I'm not on. I didn't come on YouTube to talk about a light. That's Junior's friend was. They knew each other. Used to uh, add it out enough with each other. Why do you need me in the middle? I, you know, that was your relationship. A light wasn't with me. I didn't commit no crimes with A light. Do I have my opinions about him with the, with everything, good, bad, or indifferent? Absolutely. But I, it, 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 it's not for me to get involved, and that's between them. I, I'm the, just, I'm not a gossip. We're not going to get into that. I'm going to get into things that pertain to me and that were personal to me. So this thing about and, and also let's go let's go one step further. Surrogates. Do the Gaudis have surrogates trying to get to you? You named Angel, you named the Junior, and, and everybody with the Gaudi name. But surrogates, you don't have any surrogates. Get I have nobody I talked to in the Gaudis. I spoke to Angel by phone twice. I'm so sick. Of, I had a friend in this genre. This is how this is how sick this genre can be sometimes. I got so angry, I just freaking spilled my drink. Um, but because. This genre is so full of negativity that if you don't hit people and attack people and F you people all day long, you are considered to be kissing ass. That's what it means in this genre. You're kissing ass if you don't attack, if you don't F you people. And I never attack anybody on my whole. I, had, I got a million views and 10,000 subscribers on Black Hand Print. Never F you to anybody before I started working over here with you. So I had a friend in this genre that accused me. Of getting a check from Angel, of, of being paid by the Gaudis. This is how this is how demented this stuff gets sometimes. Because the only thing you're allowed to do in this genre is attack people. I'm done with it. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, no, just to clear it up. I, it just, I think there's a healthy conversation. Many people, because they do put this in the comment sections. And, uh, you know, it's something I think that had to be cleared up sooner or later. Better off we did it today. Get it out of the way. And uh, people could still ask questions. I'll answer it. But it, at what part of ad nauseum do you, you keep going on this? So, uh, but look, they're quality questions. A lot of people maybe don't see our shows, all of them. Like, uh, uh, there, there are commenters on YouTube. I tell them, go over to Patreon and, and listen to the rest of the tape. You have a small bit of information. Take, digest all the information before you say we have a certain agenda or we're on the attack or, or what. Or, or, you know, you got to have to digest everything, not just one part. And we want you to go to Gravano. We want you to go to we we're the biggest promoter of every other channel. I'm not I'm not worried about saying Lee Cole's name because he may get views. I want him to get all the views he can. As long as he puts good content out there, why not? Jeff they do. Why not? If they put good content out there, why not? Why shouldn't we help them along? So, you know, like I said, Gravano too. We put up his words. His videos, go see them. He gets all the hits, no matter what he says. The guy won't, in the list, the, when he attacked me and two other, at least two other guys, right? Challenge the fight, that's silly. But he won't even say their names because they may get a hit. I, I mean, uh, it was, are we kidding or what? Who's playing the game here? I would want, I would want to get that bounce if somebody says something negative about me to answer it. And, in a, in a you know a civil way, why not? So the, the people out there that come in with comments, we don't block. We only got block people who who say really really stupid stuff on there. They attack you, uh, your race, your religion, uh, your, and other things on there. We really just block them because you get you get some, not a lot, but you get some. But we ain't gonna block a quality question that may that may be uh, uh, attacking me. I don't take it as an attack. I'm ready to answer. Everybody knows that. I tell people, thank you for your support. <laughs> you know, so, uh, it, 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 you know, I think we cleared up the air today, hopefully. Um, and let's you just get sure If you know how to block people. Do you know how to block people? No. I didn't think you did. I don't know if you... <laughs> this you channel... Me. This channel gets a lot of love. We have a 97% like rating on our channel. I can't make that number up. It comes from YouTube. Um, most of the attacks on our channel, I get them. I'm a Muli on, a Muli. I'm, I talk too much. I, you know, I'm, I'm supposed to just sit here like a doofus and spout off one question at a time and not, and not have any commentary because that's why I left Black Handprint to come over here and parrot, you know, one line sentences. No, I'm, I'm, I'm here to be a part of the show. So attacks on our channel come to me. I get most of the attacks. Michael might get one out of every 100. I get the other. If we get three attacks, most all three are usually me. <laughs> Let's answer some questions. Okay, I, uh, at 4.09, what time is it now? 4.50. Right. Well, yeah, it's 4.50. Okay, so we got time for one more. So you were doing all this for the Gotti's mic, question mark? I mean, again, I, I, let's not even answer that. I think we answered it. This guy, I, he's, I don't know, he's, he's a smart guy, but I don't understand. It's just something that he don't get. Now, here, Wamaka, right? Wamaka. Why does Sammy criticize John for bringing Junior into the life when Sammy actually sold drugs with his son, Gerard, and Gerard went to jail for nine years compared to John Junior's six years? Well, it's a quality question because it's after the life. John brought his son into the life. Okay, that was John's business to bring his son into the life. It was part of what he wanted to do to protect himself, insulate himself with his son, somebody he could really trust. Again, when I bring my kids into the life, absolutely not. But a lot of guys do bring their kids into the life. So that was John's choice at that time in the life. Now, the second part of Wamaka's question is, or statement, really, is that Sammy getting out of life, taking all that money, or four or five million dollars, whatever he took it when he got out of prison, he went into the drug business with his family. That's a quality question. How do you knock John on shows for bringing Junior into the life when after the life, when you, 
everything you did, you have scorched earth and everything in that life and the people there. You go into the drug business with your family. I mean, how does he have the right? And these are the things I'm talking about. How could he not be called out on? This Wamaka and a lot of other people are calling him out. It's not only me and, and RJ calling him out. There's other content makers. The world just about that has an opinion, a, an unbiased opinion, calls that out. It's fair game. Sammy, you put your family in the drug business. If they started and you got in, you want to be the commander of, of, of your family and, and their network. It's undeniable. There's tapes. You talk about John getting caught on tape. You got caught on tape talking to your whole family. It, it, this is, this is it, it, I, I don't get people. I, I don't get it why they say John was a, a bad guy to Sammy. Well, look what he did after the fact. He destroyed everybody. And then you want to talk about everybody in a negative way, that they were all bad, the whole world was bad, and you're the victim of everything. Did he blame Gerard and his daughter and his wife for the drug business? Yeah. you got to be kidding me. So questions like Wamaka. I don't know this Wamaka. He comes on there. He gives quality questions, quality statements, like thousands of others that we have. Thousands. They ask these questions of me and you. So these, this is, a, this is a question that I'm, I'm sure Milwaukee, uh, Milwaukee don't even live in the country. I'm just going by his name, which is a fair assessment, I guess, right? But I'm just taking a guess. These are people from all over the world. We have, we have from Australia, Mozambique, and not, not even for joke. We got somebody from Mozambique that comes into us. So. Yeah, you know, to me, you, that shows that. you can't run away from it. I mean, these are questions that people want to ask. I'm willing to take the heat. Bring it. If you have something to, uh, to say about me, I'm, I put myself public forum. Don't have thin skin. The guy's got thin skin. I'll give you another one, right? He sits there and pontificates all day long. He's got a picture of Joe Pesci on the wall, a fake mobster, right? Joe Pesci even wants to shoot him. He's got the gun to his head. Look at the poster of the show. Joe Pesci's got a gun. He's sitting like he wants to get shot in the head by a fake guy. Come on. The life ain't fake. This is real. And, and you know, if I said, I could say one word right now, one number. We got 535 people in the live chat right now. If I said one number right now, the whole chat would know exactly what I'm talking about. If I said 19. They all will go, oh, Sammy killed 19 people. This guy has a whole platform that he built on talking about his horror stories, talking about people he killed, talk stand, standing over the body. You fuck, you fuck, you made me do this. This guy does not apologize. I get attacked. People tell me, you're attacking an 80-year-old man. He talks every day. He has 100 million views on YouTube talking about people he killed, family members, friends, and I'm the bad guy? I mean, come on. You're the bad. We're attacking him by repeating the same stories that he's told himself. We're yeah. using him for, 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 for clicks, too. That's the new one that, I, that, that I'm hearing. We're using his name for, well, even though you knew him since eight years old. <laughs> you grew up with the guy. If I grew up with a guy since eight years old and, I, and I'm talking about him, I'm not using you. I know you. <laughs> so why, is it, why isn't his show devoid of the Gotti name? Exactly. Why do I have to mention John Gotti? Like, why do I have to mention Gravano? He was an integral part of my life growing up and in that life. Help me get there, right? Uh, and John, why are you me talk about John? You should never have talked about John from the first day. Why? Because he was involved with John. He's got to talk about John. Uh, you know, look, I think we spent enough time on this, yeah. trying to clear this up. Uh, there's some quality questions out there. Yeah, let's, ask some, let's ask some. Let's ask some questions here. All right. Um, hey, Michael, if you ever, if you never cooperated, would you have went back into the life? Absolutely. If I would, if it, either went to trial. I was going to trial in there, so either I beat it, or I get life, unless they come with a, a good deal. If they would have came with a good deal, five, six, seven years, I probably would have copped out to that. Uh, don't forget, I just came off a trial. I was seasoned. Uh, I was in trial form already. I got acquitted in Atlanta. 
it was a huge case, huge racketeering trial. Um, and uh, I, I was a half a lawyer at that time. Uh, so, uh, yeah, if, if I, either way, yeah, I, I 100% I want it back in my life. I'm glad you said that. Can I ask you, uh, I'm going to interject another question. Were you only facing eight years? Where did they get that? Where does people get these numbers from? I don't, I don't know. You get convicted in the in, in the feds, a trial for murder. It's life, automatic life, no parole. Now, could people make deals? I was going to trial in that case. Everybody knows that. People could come on and say, you're just talking to them. I was going to trial in that case. I had a very good case. I had a good shot of beating that case. Um, things happened. We'll talk about that down the road. But there was never, ever, for clarity, there was never asked by us to make a deal. And they never came to us to make a deal. Never made an appointment to make a deal. Have lawyers to go in and ask about a deal. Never happened. Never. By none of the defendants. Uh, the Deuce sends a $20 super chat in. Thank you. Uh, he says, you guys are a breath of fresh air, much needed on mob tube. Thank you. Um, let's see here. $5 donation. Um, I was listening to Robert Rosso and he mentioned he did time with Johnny G. Did, did he have anything to do with um, today's topic? No, not to well, in the uh, in the show with the Bono. Yeah, Johnny G's name is mentioned uh, for the construction and uh, setting, uh, giving uh, Sam the information that the Bono had an, an office in there, in the building. Yeah, so his name was mentioned. Uh, yeah, he was put with uh, Sammy took him from uh, Danny Marino, his cousin, and put him with him in the construction. Friends of the channel, great guys. Me and Michael are. We endorse their channel. We support their channel. These are, in my opinion, the most well-researched uh, mob history people on YouTube. Um, the mob archaeologists, they say, arguably about 60% of memberships just want to keep their own head down and not engage in politics, which is why wars are won by minority factions within families. Very good. And uh, correct. When these guys talk, like E.F. Hutton, listen, they got the facts down. <laughs> guys, if you guys want a true, uh, like uh, almost like a PBS or like a history style, mm -hmm. history channel type of channel, no frills, no bullshit, no clickbait, um, no attempts at even commercial appeal. I talk to these guys by phone before they launch their channel. Michael gave them that name, the mob archaeologist. Michael put them together. Michael put, got them on YouTube. And they told me early on, if this channel ever hits 5,000 subscribers, that's a success. We're okay with 1,000 views, 500 views. They're not trying to go, what, what they're trying to do, if you're really just interested in the pure history, check out these guys. They are the best. Would you agree with that, Michael? Oh, my God, yeah. Yep. They are the best. All four of them. Uh, and fantastic human beings, so good-hearted, legit people. Nobody's got anything to do with, do with the, the street. And they don't have family in the mob, nothing like that. Just people that are uh, interested in the, the – uh, there's no gray with them. It's it's black or white, and that's the way they speak in these terms. Uh, somebody just texted me on my phone. I look sleepy, one of my friends. I look sleepy? <laughs> if I look sleepy, I need like a double espresso if somebody in the world can hear me. Yeah, whoever talks to me, I think they should say, uh, "Bring me an espresso." <laughs> no, you look, you look about, you look, you look good to me. <laughs> yeah, it comes from a good source, so maybe I do look sleep. But today, I like a triple colada, a Cuban, Cuban espresso, a colada. You ever have one? I took you there, RJ. Yeah, you did. You did. You did. Yeah. The best, have they have the best. They have the best espresso I've ever had. My favorite side, baby. Yeah, and a real good rice ball. <laughs> Who was loved more and who was feared more in Bensonhurst? Anthony Spiro or Frank DeChico? Love the same. I can't put that fear. I, I, there's another opinion I have about being feared, who's the toughest, who's the, the, the biggest killer and all that. I don't equate them with the person as far as comparing them to each other. Of course, uh, my, my theory is always the, lead, the guy with the gun last is the toughest. 
So whether you kill nobody and the, the first guy is one and the guy that, that got shot had 10 or 12 bodies or 20, 50 bodies, the guy that's standing with that one at that point, he's the toughest guy in the room. So, but two great names you mentioned, uh, two guys you could, that we, anybody could hang around them and have some laughs and uh, be really impressed with the way they treated you respectfully. Either one of those guys would get up if you're in the club and say, you, you didn't have to be anybody. Get up and get you if they cook frankfurters one day, hot dogs, right? Get up and get, you want a hot dog? I'm getting one. They would get up and get it for you. That's the type of guy these guys were. Mob Archaeologist says, thanks for the compliments. Um, <laughs> um, Jeff Nadeau says, uh, he donates $20 to the channel. He says, oh, this is an inside joke between uh, Nadeau and I. Um, <laughs> early when I met Jeff. It's said, a miracle. I got wake up juice. <laughs> Where's mine? <laughs> Come on over. Yeah, yeah. I'll be, I'll be seeing you soon. Um, Jeff and I used to have this. You know, he always says, I'm going to bleep it out, but he says, one day, sometimes we go through comments. Anybody who's watching, no matter if no one responds to you or not, the creators read your comments, even if you never get a response. I talk to everybody in the background. Um, and <laughs> Jeff had this great quote. He said, RJ, who the F do these people think they are? <laughs> and ever since that day, it's been like a... Just a uh, you know a little slogan. Jeff should make T-shirts and write that on the shirt because whenever we, we're going through something and you deal with some of this stuff, that's what that's what goes to my mind first. Who the f do these people think they are? Sometimes he, these are tight. I wake up to you, you know, what's this Mulian doing? Asking Michael a question. All you can do is in that situation is say, who the f do these people think they are? <laughs> So, Jeff, we haven't heard from you. Uh, at least I haven't. I hope all is well with you and your show is going well, doing well. And uh, another guy, give, give a shout out to the guys that, uh, 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 you know, are fair to each other in this genre because it's um, pretty competitive where it really shouldn't. Instead of working in conflict, everybody should work in concert in, in some fashion, uh, sharing information, watching each other's shows and giving each other a bounce, like uh, mob archaeologist, Jeff, uh, even Lee Cole, uh, you know, and your friend Tom Lavecchia. Uh, you got to put some pretty good shows out there, pretty good guys. The other guys I really don't, I've never met, but uh, FBS, another good guy. Uh, you know, the guy was incredib incredibly impressed me with a, an apology. There was some misinformation, a misstatement one day, and the guy came on and corrected it, and, I, you know, I applaud him. Because uh, it takes a, a, a big man to, to when they make a mistake. Every, we all make mistakes in life. Sammy was looking for that apology, right? <laughs> uh, I, mean, yeah. I can't help myself. You put a seat in it, it just keeps going. Till... <laughs> FBS. Ready. Anyone? You know, FBS, not, most people don't know. He's the guy that got me over 1,000 subscribers. Um, he was the first guy to endorse me. So I always give FBS all plugs every chance I get like FBS is the first guy on here to and he and even after I continued to grow he always said RJ's a wizard at this he's the best to ever do it he never was like envious or anything so FBS we're plugging your show brother <laughs> why not why not why yeah not? um you know also we've we've gotten some requests to have um some uh, guests so we 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 vacillate on that uh, guest no guest stuff uh, you know, we feel we need to get enough of our stuff out before we bring somebody else on. But if you're really interested in somebody uh, that's out there and, and if we can accommodate, we will. You know, we'll think about it and do it. I just don't want to uh, right now just interrupt what we're trying to do. We still got to get back. To, RJ, we still got to get back to the Raven Eye tapes. Not fair to Sammy. No, no, pun, no screwing around. Not really. We got to finish those tapes out. It's not fair to Sammy. Not fair. That, that's fair. It's all fair. All is fair in love and war, they say, right? <laughs> it's not fair, and we should finish the tapes out. We have the Foxwood tapes. Somebody reminded me the other day. Mm -hmm. We never talked about it. Not yet. It's up. We didn't talk about it, though. Yeah, I got the, the CNN with the Gold Club. We, did we ever put that one up? That's up. Right, we never one right now. And we got the football game that uh, with John Jr. Uh-huh. 
Craig De Palma, Willie yeah. Marshall, uh, Noel Mordica, and some uh, Chin's godson, my friend Joey. They're all in this video. We're just being ourselves playing football in the bubble out in uh, Long Island. And uh, pretty interesting uh, to see the people there at that time in a different form. Yeah. So we I, I got to see it, guys. It's pretty interesting to see Gambino family or, or mobsters playing two-hand touch football. <laughs> it's kind of we two-hand touch. We, we, the, the touch is no two-hand push football. <laughs> Who's going to hit the balls? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Let me explain something. <laughs> you put that thing on the side. You step on that field. You take this. You put it on the side. Well, no. uh, <laughs> And all, yeah. Now, was this when Junior was in as acting at that point? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was ninety. No one touched Junior the whole time. His clothes looked real clean in that video too. He had no no stains on him. No, no, he's, he's, no, no it was on, it wasn't on dirt. It was on, it was in the bubble. You know what? <laughs> you know what? You know, no, he could get hit. He had to get hit. That's it. This the, yeah. this is the opportunity. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. Uh, yeah, Junior had told me one time because I used to play in an outside league. You know, I played a lot of football league, softball, football, et cetera, even when I was a skipper. And uh, he told me one time, she said, no, you got you got to stop playing. Why? He said, when, when somebody hits you, you get in a fight. So, and you put that on the side. You're playing ball. This is, you know, what, are you supposed to tiptoe? No, you want to get hit. You want to be in the action. I'm hitting you <laughs> as hard as I could. <laughs> I've been I've been I've been told I was a little dirty at times. <laughs> I just play with a lot of aggression. And sometimes you you know your aggression leads into uh, a little aggressive hit, which can be <laughs> dirty. Nine dollar donation to the channel from Graham. Uh seventy dollar donation to the channel. He says you've mentioned dealing with Pete Milano in Los Angeles over a money issue with Joe Asgro. An unnamed Los Angeles member offered to pay back the funds. Do you recall who this was? Oh, yeah. That's a great story. Mythological. Did I say that right? Yeah. Mythological. That's pretty good for Brooklyn. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, yeah, I could do a Pete Milano, California story. Absolutely. With Joe, with Joe Isgro. I proposed Joe Isgro, by the way. I found him floundering out there in California. Well, actually, he found me when I went out there once with uh, Mickey Rook. Uh, I was sitting in a cafe and he came over to me. A great guy. Pure gentleman. My man. He's a good guy. <laughs> I just spoke to him, of course. I wish him the best. Hopefully he's still alive. I don't know. But um, great guy. Made the movie Hoffa. Watch his movie Hoffa with Jack Nicholson. I know that. Now you do. Okay. I know now. And look, if you don't know, now you know. <laughs> <Just like that. laughs> you know what I'm saying, right? Or you don't know that either. No, you just told me Biggie. earlier in the show. Biggie, Biggie said, if you don't Oh, know. of course I know that. Come on, that's my era. I'm born in 85. Come yeah, but on, you said baby. you don't know. Well, okay. I'm surprised you know that, actually. <laughs> um hi Mikey and hi RJ. Mikey, did you do any work with Tommy Karate? Well, work is, you know, the definition of work is murders. No, absolutely not. Did I, did I have interaction with Tommy? Yes. We had a couple of uh, things that uh, we sat down over with Frankie Lino, with Skipper at the time. Uh, interesting story. Uh, Tommy was a gentleman as, as the sit down went and uh, presented his case. And uh, we did them a favor. We left somebody alone. I'll explain this story one day. But yeah, yeah, Tommy, Tommy was a good guy. I like Tommy. Um, let's see here. I think power went to Sammy's head after he made it to the administration. Do you agree? Well, yes. Let me preface this by saying, you know, absolutely. But uh, Sam, you know, which nobody really talks about. Sammy has started doing a lot of steroids. And I wasn't there to watch him do them, but I know three people that, were and two of them told me two wise guys so yes i think there was a combination a mixture of what was inside his stomach the power he had 
uh, misuse of power that he did through John Sr. approving everything. Uh, again, listen to the tapes, and you'll see how John, after three years, this is, doesn't happen in one week. John's starting to build and build, and it comes out on, on those tapes in December, November, December of 90, at least. We don't know what happens before. The tapes weren't up. It wasn't bugged or what John was thinking, but you could only go by for that point. Yes, it went to Sammy. Sammy was a powerhouse, not to take that away from him. You had to walk on eggshells with Sammy at, at, at that time uh, because of, you know, the, the, the troops were seeing it, the, the bodies dropping around them. Uh, did you know Michael Bolino with the Columbos or his brother Anthony? Yeah. Yeah, no, no. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we're good guys. And, um, yeah, things happen. Um, five dollar donation to the channel. Hello, Michael. Do you have any stories or memories on Joe Corey? Seems like an interesting low key figure. Oh yeah, oh yeah. This this is uh, he was um, uh, Trafficanti's godson. Long 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 history. That's what when you think about Cosa Nostra, right? In its purest form, going back to Sicily in those days of. Uh, that type of honor where, where this all started. He kept up that tradition. He was one of those gentlemen, uh, captain for a long time. His father was uh, Domenico. He was called Utsu and uh, very, very smart, invested in real estate, had some unions, asphalt union, uh, et cetera. Uh, under the radar, like I said, uh, I have a couple little stories I could tell. They'll will tie in. With a, with a bigger story, well, mentioned Joe in the story. Uh, he was, uh, I'll give you a little tidbit. He was made acting uh, consigliere. And uh, after a little time, uh, Pete, had, Pete Gotti was telling me they were going to take him down from that position because they felt he was getting a little senile, dementia, or Alzheimer's, or whatever they call it today. But uh, the word we always used was uh, senile. And uh, I was, I talked to Joe, and this man was not senile. I think Joe played that card. Let me get out of the way. Make him, make him believe he slowed up. Make him believe his memory wasn't that good. And let me get out of the way and live my life. I die in prison uh, with that uh, with the people that were running the Gambino family at that time. So I know what the old man did. Well, yeah, and he didn't have to tell me. There was nothing wrong with him. We have a picture. Maybe you could put it up at uh, leaving his uh, wife's wake. It was uh, Huck, Lou Valerio, Eddie Garofalo, and myself. Uh, we went out to the wake, his wife's wake. Great guy. I loved him. Classy man. <clears throat> um, $20 donation to the channel. And Michael, in Leonetti's book, Sammy is quoted on the 91 convictions as I knew what Phil knew, what me and John had told him about the hit on Paul. I knew that with him testifying, we didn't have a chance. That's interesting. It's a statement more than a question. So this yeah. is in Leonetti's yeah, in Leonetti's book. Yeah. I, again, I didn't read it. Did you read it, RJ? Yeah, great book. Oh, okay. So he, he says Sammy is quoted. I knew that Phil knew and what had told. You know. So in other words, he knew Leonetti was going to testify against him also? That's that kind of how I'm reading it, yeah. Yeah. So he's just making, he's more of a, he's, he's making a statement more than he's asking a question. So um, is this much just the case that Sammy knew he couldn't win? That if he knew Leonetti was going to testify, right? None the boss? Right? Not to do with Johnny Key's murder. I'm sure he would give information on that, Leonetti. Right, Sammy was on that, so there was, would have been another murder added on to him. I, I'm just guessing because I, yeah, I, it sounds like that's what he's trying to. He's letting it know there's something interesting here with this with this information. Yeah, yeah. So it, Alexander, we appreciate it. Maybe you can email us at uh, at our site. It's over here. MD, no excuses. Uh, give us a little bit more. We'd love to talk about it. And uh, RJ, do a little homework because if it ties into with 
Sammy was thinking that Leonetti may testify against him also. What do you have a Leonetti flip? I don't see, I don't know. I don't know off the top of my head, so I don't want to guess because he was before Sammy. No, uh, no, I think he was after. Oh, then he couldn't testify against him then. Hold on. I think he was after Sammy. I'm trying yeah. to put my, I think he was after. All right, so that would fall flat in my uh, reasoning there that Sammy would think Lee and that he's going to testify. Uh, not sure. All right, so let's leave that for another day, Alexander. And it's uh, food for thought. Um, $5 donation. Hello, Michael. Do you have any stories? Oh, did that. we answered that one. Okay. Um, Michael, did you know Willie Marshall, the enforcer? Any thoughts on him? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I, I just mentioned Willie uh, a couple of minutes ago. He's in the video we're going to show. I don't know about him being an enforcer. He was a, he was a good guy. He was close with uh, Craig De Palma. And Junior liked him as well, very much. They were all workout guys. And I would goof on them about their muscles. Uh, funny story, in the video you're going to see, Willie's, Willie's in great shape, great shape. This guy could have been on the cover of a magazine. Uh, and he was a bouncer at Scores. And I used to hang out at a restaurant up the block called Marco's. Uh, with Danny Marino's son had taken me there. And uh, Willie would come up there with his girlfriend at the time and hang out. And we're playing football in, the, in that in that bubble that night. And with all his muscles, he, he comes out a little limping just before the game. I said, what's the matter with you? He said, I pulled a muscle. I said, you pulled the muscle? With all the muscles you got, you don't need that muscle. Get in there and go play. What do you mean you pulled the muscle? You got a lot of muscles. So, no, Willie was a good guy. He testified against me in Atlanta. I'll give you another funny story about Willie since we're on here. We got time? Oh, you got to go. No, 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 no. Keep going. Go. Uh, they call him as a witness against me uh, for the uh, case in Atlanta with the scores in the gold club. And uh, I got all, I had a whole bunch of, I used to keep a little chocolate bars, Snicker bars, uh, Hershey bars, Chunkies. I used to keep it on my desk during the course of the day. I would, I would eat all these, I like candy. So uh, I had all these things. So they're calling Willie up to testify against me. And uh, there's nobody in the courtroom. The judge ain't there yet. And the jury's not in the box, of course. And But there's all the agents and prosecutors and sitting there. And the agent that brought him down was uh, talking to him, right? And then he goes to sit down, which could talk to him before. You're talking to him just before he's going to, the judge walks in. What else are you prepping him on? So uh, Willie's not looking at me. I think what the agent told him, don't look at Michael. Because I, I was sitting there trying to get his attention. I wanted him to look at me. I was going to make him laugh, right? So finally, I'm looking all over, going, going, trying to get his attention. And he goes like this. He turns his head. And I take the candy. And I go like this. These little candy bars. I go like this. What do you want to do? <laughs> he busts out hysterical laughing. The agent went back, had his finger in his face, right? And judge walked in. He had to go sit down. So Willie turned red. He got embarrassed. And what he proceeded to do helped me win that case. He was one of the little, little part to help me win that case. He, he embarrassed him. He got mad. And he turned it around a little bit on them. So I got that Willie Marshall. I never got a chance to thank him. So he helped me on that case. Shady656 donates $50. Let's build up the Patreonacy familiar. Michael, how'd you come up with that name? You just one day announced it in the, we're just on air and you're like, Patreon, hello, Patreonacy's. <laughs> well, Seth, thank you very much. And uh, we screwed up on another phone call. We got our communications down, but we will be doing that. You're, you're a big supporter of our, of our Patreonacy family uh, and a, a great, a great input you have. Uh, you're an intelligent man. And uh, looking forward to our conversation. Sorry, sorry we crossed wires. Now, when you come from a town in Italy, Buzacanese, Corleonese, right? They, you, you take on uh, that Asi on some uh, paeses, some towns in it, Sicily and Italy. So, Patriot, Patrianese. Yeah. So, I made it inclusive of the people that belong to our family. Because we started with the family, right? Mm -hmm. uh, our family and pa uh, on Patreon channel. Why can't we be become like a little town? Our Patreonazies. Okay. That makes sense? It makes perfect sense. I hope my Sicilian friends think I did a good job. <laughs> or go dance at the, the computer. 
Anyone that wants to join Patreon, I will drop a link into the chat if you want to join our Patreon. We're over 600 members now. Um, Patreon's, uh, I mean, we're very interactive on Patreon. We're there a lot. We're there every day. We're interacting. A lot of photos you never saw. A lot of stuff you never saw. I can do a commercial break for my own show, right? Promote, promote our own stuff every now and then. We oh. shout out everybody else. We gave Lee Cole and FBS and they do and Angel and, and everybody a shout out, right? <laughs> well, you know what? You know, somebody had, had uh, emailed us and they says, I don't understand. You guys never ask in the beginning and the end of the show to hit the subscribe button. You know why, Michael? Never say hit the like button. You know why? why are you promoting yourself. You know why? Yeah, tell the people. Because I'm just like you. I hate asking people for anything. <laughs> I just don't like to ask people for stuff. My whole theory in life, do great, do good work, and the, and, and the byproduct of, is all the things that you would have to ask for. So, you know, uh, it's, it's sort of, you know, we, we, <laughs> our philosophy, I guess, is the same. And we don't really talk about this, is uh, let your conscience be your guide. Whoever's listening to us, if you like it, you know the subscribe button's there. You know the like button's there. We're not going to go around uh, uh, soliciting that. We just want to give you good content and let you know we, this isn't, uh, you know, to support us. We can't have, buy milk or you can't buy cranberry juice. You know, we're doing this uh, because we got our heart in the game here. Sure, there's expenses attached to this. And, and at times when we travel, big expenses. So uh, and we go, we've been going in our pockets. So with the, the onset of, of Patreon, it helps us offset a lot of the, the costs that we do. So uh, that's the answer to the person who asked me, why don't we hit subscribe? You ask you to hit subscribe or like. But please you like, please hit like and subscribe, guys. Tell yeah. your friends. Sammy, Sammy wants to go to Hollywood. You got to support him. He oh. said, did he say it? Yeah, he, he did. He's saying it though. I'm only saying what he said. You know, he's going, oh my God. But doesn't he always say, I want to go to Hollywood. I need to go. To, I need you to subscribe. I got to build it up to go to Hollywood. Yeah. Vinny Boom Bats donates $100. No, thank Vinny you. Boom Bats. I can He's, only say thank you. He has no question. Either, like that was Vinny Boom Bats. Okay. Boom Bats. Yes. Thank you, Vinny Boom Bats. Paul Cranfield donates $100. No comment. He just says. One hundred dollars. So thank you. I appreciate the donation. Amazing, because Patreon is also. Um, ten dollar donation. Love this channel, Michael and RJ. If there never was such a thing as Cosa Nostra, what do you think you would have done for a living? Good question. Yeah, it is. Uh, well, I, that's that's a good answer. Probably Wall Street. I think I would have went on Wall Street because uh, you need a personality. You know, and I think I do have a personality that I can interact with people like that. And uh, I don't know if my, my street skills would have been a, as, as sharp, though. Growing up in the street in Brooklyn and in New York, you get a different set of skill. Uh, you get a different skill set, I should say. You know, it's that street skill set. So without my, uh, my mentors growing up and teaching me certain things that you have to absorb. People can talk to you. You could, you could hear them. But you need to listen to them. Hearing and listening is two different things, you know. And uh, I think that made, you know, my street creds growing up with Cosa Nostra and, and street people, maybe that much more sharper in just in life. So I don't know. I don't know how the world would have turned out. It's a great hypothetical, but I probably would have wound up on Wall Street. Seth Tomlinson. Thank you for the donation, five dollars. Would Nino Gaggi have retaliated after the hit on Paul if he was still on the streets? No. Would they, would they have had to kill him too? And awesome show, thanks, guys. No, that was the question about you know not coming in for John. I, I I don't know about that. I don't think it's true. Nino was there. I see Nino's, and you, you know when Paul died, Frankie De Chico took the club over, and then when Frankie died, Jimmy Brown took the club over. Uh, Nino was around again. He had trials. Uh, and then he went away. Um, Nino would not, not, he knew the life, not have retaliated. There's no way. He was in bad standing, don't forget, with Paul. He, Paul took him down as a skipper. Uh, so, and if it, Paul wasn't that close to him, uh, with the families that interacted, Nino might have got clipped by Paul, along with Roy. So, um, no, he wouldn't have retaliated. Um... 
Did you have any interactions with Joe Peruta? Uh, I knew Joe. I, no real interaction as far as business. Uh, very close with Sam, as we know, as history shows. Uh, yeah, nothing really in the neighborhood. No, I had no interaction with him. The only thing I can say about that, let go Peruta's story. Peruta was dying. And here comes a Gravano story. Peruta was dying, and Gravano told me that uh, a couple of things. One, they weren't going to straighten him out when he was dying in his deathbed. Uh, but before that, he told me, he says, maybe we load Peruta up with some bombs. And he goes and gives Giuliani a hug and he blows himself up and he'll be a legend for life uh, in the afterlife. He'll be a martyr. I don't know if anybody's ever heard that one. No, I never heard that. Uh, now you just, now you, if you don't know, now you know. <laughs> Did Sammy talk about that? He went to Peru to go blow himself up hugging Giuliani? Did he ever talk about that? Uh, if he did, I didn't hear it. All right, so I just gave him some more subject matter. Come on, Sam. <laughs> Twenty dollars a channel donation from Alexander Wilson. Lee and Danny flipped in '89. Thank you. Um, in his book, he said that the information he gave the feds was used for the '90 RICO indictments on Gotti and Sammy. He said he was going to be the main witness against them, but then Sammy flipped. Yes, that's how did I not? <laughs> I didn't, that's true. I didn't know that part. He's right. See, this is what we like. We like the people out here. The fact check and see that. So what I, my hypothetical or my hypotheses that I said that maybe Sammy knew Leonetti was going to testify against him. Of course, I don't know if Keys was in that and in, uh, his indictment originally. Uh, they might have superseded if Leonetti was going to testify with the uh, Johnny Simone murder. Uh, of course, Leonetti knew about that. So uh, Sammy, if Sammy knew that and felt that, that's another reason why he flipped. You could have put that. I'm not saying. I'm just saying that's my opinion. That he put that. He factored that into flipping. That he was going to have Lee and Eddie against him also. Uh, let's see here. Five dollar channel donation. Michael, forgive me if this was already asked. Why was your brother Robert killed? Did you want to take revenge? What if you had? Well, I'm going to do, Ryan, I'm going to do a show on this, of course, about my brother. Uh, Sammy gave some misinformation about it, which, again, it's one of the personal things that I need to sh uh, straighten up. Uh, and why did you want, of course, I wanted to take revenge. I was basically threatened not to by my own people. Or they would cut me loose and I'd be on my own. Uh, and that this is the life. If you watch the Trevor McDonald's uh, show, the interview, and one I think we did on here, RJ, you'll get a little gist of what, what I was told. Uh, and if I had, if I would have got revenge, it would have been open, I would have been dead. My mother would have lost two sons. Remember this. When you seek revenge, dig two graves. <laughs> $10 channel donation. Michael, I mean, RJ, can you ask Michael what his past memories are of Jimmy Calandra of the Bath Ave crew? Jimmy has done videos where he has spoken very highly and fondly of Michael growing up in Bensonhurst. Yeah, I know Jimmy as a kid, you know, a little kid. Not even like a teenage kid, little kid. I know Jimmy. And uh, he was invited to my wedding. There's he, Jimmy put pictures out of him uh, attending my wedding. Uh, dancing with my mother or being near my mother. Uh, so, yeah, I know Jimmy from a kid. Absolutely. And all those kids on Bad Theory. They, don't forget, they're, they're probably, I'm going to guess, 52, 53, maybe 54 years old now. I have 14 to 15 years on them. Jimmy, I should take the work. Uh, uh, let me clear this up. I should sit <laughs> in the car driving. Right. I knew, I knew you were going to say this. I knew you were going to do this. I know your mind now. Go ahead. You know my mind now? Yeah. I'm going to start changing the way I think. That's it. <laughs> I'm getting predictable? I don't like that. <laughs> no, somebody's been asking questions again on Patreon. So let me <laughs> this up. So I'd be driving. i take all the kids to work. I think they were like 16 at the time. And... Uh, uh, whoever's sitting in the back seat, whether it be my uh, my son Michael, his friends, Jimmy, or anybody on my 
anybody sitting in the back say, do me a favor, give me a shot on my shoulders by trap. I'd be driving to just squeeze my shoulder a little bit. And that's the extent of it. There's no laying down massage. There's no oil. There's no candles. There's none of that stuff. It's just, give me a shot on my shoulders over here. Like, again, I was playing a lot of ball. Heavy back, I just get a little tight, drink it all night. You know, so give me a little shot on my shoulders. And that's it. Hope that clears it up. Mark this minute marker. So if somebody says so, I'd refer to that minute marker. <laughs> and Donna Summers? I, I love this car, but old disc, Donna Summers. I love Donna Summers. Yeah, I, I think all the time. If I remember it correctly, I think you said that you'd be listening to Donna Summers. Hey, everything. I listen to all yeah. this music. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good. I've been asked that question so many times. I get it in the chat a lot. I'm saying, I'm not asking this ridiculous question today. <laughs> Come on. Like, so I never people, it, it, people act like they never got a massage before. It wasn't a massage. It was just squeezing my traps. But you, you, nobody's ever gotten a massage by a guy before. <laughs> I would let a gorilla massage me. <laughs> I let anybody massage me. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Um, look at this a lot. Let's answer it. Hey, Michael, how'd you get the name Scars? Yeah. Uh, if I got bit in the face by my dog, you know, it was, my face was just about ripped off. It was just a little piece hanging and they put it back, plastic surgery inside, not on the outside. And it took a while. There were so many Michaels in my neighborhood. At first I was called as a real kid, little Michael, because I was really short. So with all the Michaels was the number one name, I think for like almost 20 years in the country, Michael. So we had so many Michaels, Vinnies, Anthony's, et cetera. You wind up with a nickname to distinguish which Michael are you talking about. So after I got bit and we started playing ball and I was getting older, they would say, Michael who? Uh, it was either Michael from Bath Avenue, because there's no more little Michael. It was Michael from Bath Avenue or Mikey with the scar in the face. Mikey with the scar in the face. And the more you got your rep in the neighborhood, but fighting, gang fights, playing ball, being in clubs. It was Mikey with the scar in the face and then just short the Mikey Scar. So like Sammy the Bull. Sammy the Bull isn't Sammy the Bull. He was called Sammy Bull. The, the, the V was taken out at that time growing up. So it was Mikey Scar or then Mikey Scars. So that's how I got the name, which I never used myself at the time. Uh, it was people that referred to me. And that was only with sports and industry. Even the older guys, I heard older guys refer to me several times. Who's that? Uh, Mikey Scars. You know, it was. It, so the, you, that's your AKA. Once you get a name in Italy and, and in this, and New York, stays forever. Did you know Anthony Mira? Was he liked? Nope. Did you know anyone from the patriarchal crime family? If so, who and what can you tell us about them? Uh, not at the time. Later on, I was aware of Frank Salemi, uh, Moderano, John Long, John, uh, not Long John, John Moderano, um, Bobby Luisi, I was away with. This is after I flipped. I was with these guys. Uh, 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 John Patty wasn't a main member, but uh, was with those guys up there. There were some, several guys, Armand Codd guys I was with from New England. Uh, I tell you what, all respectful guys. I got nothing to say about New England guys. They were all super respectful. Even when they flipped, they didn't. They weren't petty, cheap. They weren't the uh, rat on rats in the rat unit. Because a lot of guys from my neighborhood like to continue ratting in the rat unit. But the Boston guys, New England guys, they didn't do that. They really kept it themselves. Um, Twenty dollar channel donation on the Reddit Mafia. There's a picture of Michael Eddie. Tommy uh, yeah. and Louis Vill and Lou Valerio uh, walking down the street like a scene <laughs> out of Goodfellas. What can you tell us, Michael? Yeah, that, that was uh, uh, Lou Valerio, not Tommy Cacciapoli. That was okay. Lou Valerio. Yep. That's the picture. Alexander found the picture. Now, if you could pull it up right now, could you pull it up? I'll, I'll try and look. I'll post it on our community after the show. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. I'll make everybody wait as I'm yeah. $5 donation from Mike. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, 
Wise Guy TV is a good channel. Um, anyone that's not uh, subscribed to Wise Guy, check him out. He's a good guy. He's, he's a it makes good content. RJ, can you ask Mikey if he is dealing, if he had any dealings with the Bonanno uh, Canada guys? Good question. Those guys are serious up there till today. They're very serious guys. Uh, who I did have dealings with, and it, again, that's being a show, and Joe Curry, like I said earlier, will be a part of the show uh, with a, uh, an ongoing beef with me, with the Banana family. And uh, George from Canada had attended a very serious meeting. I'll tell you, the, the participants was uh, Sal Vitale was the underboss. George from Canada, which is the first time I met him. He was the captain. Uh, Anthony Graziano, uh, TG, that is. Um, Pete Gotti, Eddie Garofola, and myself, we attended this meeting. And the first time I met George, and he was on the other side of this beef. And uh, you know what? I got a lot of respect for George that night, meeting him once. The guy was pure cousin Austria. And uh, not too long after this meeting, he lost his life. So I think part of this meeting, the way it turned out, might have been an add-on because he really didn't like TG. And TG got exposed at this meet. It'd be a good show. I don't want to give away too much. But it was a beef. And um, yeah, that's where George looked at him after certain information came out. Um, okay, we're going to take two more questions. We're going to wrap up the show here. Hey, Wamika, if you have a question, I might have missed it. If you have a question, drop it in the, in the chat. I'll be happy to ask Michael. Uh, Michael, uh, Mikey, who was the most charismatic mafioso that you knew and or met that stood out from the rest? And could you expand on what made them stand out? Oh, J John, for sure. Uh, you know, he holds the torch for that. He's the leader of that. Uh, as we all know, uh, he was super charismatic. You felt John's presence in the room when you walked in. And if John gave you a smile, he made you feel like a million dollars. Uh, John smiled a lot. You know, he gambled. He was grouchy. At times you knew that, you just stayed in the other room. Uh, but, uh, yeah, John could make you feel good in a minute. John was great out having a couple of drinks, martinis. Junior, gin martinis. And sometimes he had vodka martinis, John. Um, but John was a pleasure to be around outside of a setting when he let his hair down. He was good. Joe Watts. Joe Watts was one of the classiest guys I ever met. Ever. And Joe Watts was another guy who had presence. Uh, it was dress. It was where he comported himself, uh, John also, uh, which meant a lot. There was uh, Tony from Parkside. I call him Tough Tony, Tony Parkside. He was another guy, charismatic guy, carried himself very well. Um, Ali Shades, I liked Ali Shades. Very assertive gentleman, skipper with the West Side. Uh, owned a couple of clubs, Pastels, Turquoise, and Brown Derby, which was prior to Turquoise. Uh, really good guy. Uh, there, was, there's a, there was a lot of guys that just stood out. Good question. Monica says, Michael, Sammy says he told John that killing Ferrara was a huge mistake and says that John's wife is crazy. I don't think Sammy could ever talk about something that personal with, with John. What do you think? Well, Monica, you're 100% right. Sammy never told nobody ever would bring up for Barry to John. Maybe Angelo, maybe Johnny Cadillia, Charlie Cadillia, maybe his brother Jeannie uh, that could ever talk about that. The guys that went on, whoever did it in on that hit, those are the only guys who talked. Sam was never talking to John about John Favara. You know what you'll be doing? <laughs> Come on. You're right, Womaka. <laughs> It's great. When you watch this back and you see your facial reaction, they're gonna say, "Huh, you did more." I thought, talking. I, I, thought I looked tired. <laughs> you did more talking with your face now than you did. I think you're not going anywhere. Go ahead. <laughs> All right, final question. Then we're gonna wrap this show up, guys. Is there's nobody else? Hi, Mr. Sullivan. Who's he got here? I'll look for his and answer yeah. this one in a while. Michael, who is your favorite mobster? Oh, all time. Ah. 
I'm going to have to say uh, Frankie the Chico. It's a tough question because there's so many. But it from my neighborhood, knew me, at, you know, knew me at the knee. Uh, the way he comported himself also rose up. Uh, a gentleman that he was, extremely smart. His one mistake was a fatal one, uh, su supporting the killing the boss. Uh, but yeah, I, I would say Frankie all around. Luke O asked me to ask this question. Michael, did you know my father, um, Carmine Castellano? He owned Castellano Trucking Company in Brooklyn. I would have had to. Give me some, Carmine, email us. Give me some more information. Uh, I, I would have had to. I think most of the Castellanos I know. I mean, the, was he related to Paul? Because you had little Paul, you had big Paul, you had the... There was a whole bunch of cast. There was John Castellano. There was a lot of Castellanos. Constantine. Well, I'm really guys. I gotta thank you guys. I mean, you guys have been so particip like so participatory. I believe that's the word in our re premieres and our live shows. I mean, my God, we did almost thousand people in our last premiere in the live chat. We had like almost six hundred in here today. If we didn't already cross that, no, at some point it was at five eighty five. I wasn't really watching it. All of our lives just gets a lot of participation, hundreds of comments coming in. So thank you guys. I mean, Michael, you must be good at keeping people in their seats because I watched the number and I learned from FBS. He, he, I, he, he said, watch the number. When it starts going down, you're boring people. When it's, when it, when it's going up or staying consistent, you're keeping your audience. You, he said, but you got to follow that consistency number. But when you start seeing... People are dropping off because you're, you're boring them. So you must keep people pretty happy. Well, at this hour, they're hungry. They want to go to dinner. <laughs> you hold them out from going to dinner. A friend of the channel, Tom Lavecchia, uh, I was just on his show recently. He donates $10 to the channel. He says, Michael, I think there was a poll between you and him. And someone owes someone lunch. I think he owes you lunch, actually. Yeah, he, <laughs> lost, he lost that poll on his own site. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so, <laughs> but interesting. In all fairness, we lost the poll on our site. That's true, baby. So, well, again, we have to be split right down the middle. But uh, uh, oh, Mr. Old Sullivan there says Sammy's ecstasy racket and his imaginary sit down with Joe Banana in the South. I didn't see the video, but I've heard about it. Uh, he said he sat with Joe Banana. Okay. <laughs> okay. This is the same one we was slitting gas pipe's throat the other day. I'm sitting, his, his gas pipe was sitting between his legs. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I got, nah, I don't, I, nah. All right, we're going to take a couple more and then we're going to wrap this show up so the show has replay value. These long shows. Uh... Jeff Nadeau says, I was curious, Michael, if you agree with my sentiment that Jackie Knows was extremely underrated as a mobster. He gets an umbrella holder title, but he was very plugged in before and after John. Um, Jackie was an extremely loyal guy to John. Was he active in the political environment when John was there? Was he active as a uh, an action guy, no. no. Jackie was an important guy. I'm not saying he was an important guy to John, especially after the fact. Jackie took on a, 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 a more aggressive, a, a, important role after Junior was off the street. And, you know, around that time, he started to get, to get his feet really wet in that life as far as administrating and stuff. Uh, but during the time, no, it was all Sammy, it was John, it was Frankie Lowe, it was Jimmy Brown, it was Danny Marino. There was, you know, there was a lot of other captains that were, had a lot more, I'm not going to say clout, but more influential in running the Gambino family and having an industry in the Gambino family. Jackie was once told by John, I think I told you this, RJ, I don't think I ever said this before, if I did correct me. He told Jackie one time, because John, every all the captains were going to John directly, and they're wearing him out. You would think John loved all this, but after a while, they're wearing him out. And he, he looked at Jackie, he goes, 
Jack, you're supposed to be Tommy Bellotti. You're Tommy Bellotti. So he comes after, comes, Jack, you got to understand, Jack, he always had like that surprise look. He starts laughing. He says, he says, I'm supposed to be Tommy Bellotti. He's dead. I says, well, Jack, he wants you to be his buffer. Tommy was the buffer. He wanted the captains to go to him and then some, some of the captains and then explain it to John like later on at night or whatever they were. So John had no buffer in between. He wanted Jackie to assume that role a little bit, which he really never did. Jack, John would give a message to give to certain people, of course. Uh, Jackie was a great messenger because he got the messages right. He had no agenda. He was not looking for power. Jackie couldn't find money at times. He was always broke, the poor guy. you know. But a lot of fun to be around. So I'm not understating Jackie. He had an important role for John and then afterwards, but he wasn't that influential power figure that every, he walked in the room, everybody clicked their heels, like John or Sammy, et cetera, or Jimmy Brown or Danny Marino, where they commanded a little more uh, soldiering up. Jackie was, Jackie would talk to that guy with the hat on right now. <laughs> I didn't even notice the hat, the hat on him. I didn't even notice that. <laughs> I kept look, I kept looking like what the hell is that on but now I <laughs> it's opening day, RJ. I know you don't like baseball. You don't like soccer, you don't like baseball. <laughs> Michael, I'm black guy. We watch NBA basketball. That's your ball. And boxing. <laughs> Any kind of combat sports. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, boxing is a great sport. I love boxing. My favorite sport. Yeah, when you and my son Michael really like it. Uh my son Anthony also. Uh, me, yeah, I lost my zest for boxing. Junior loved boxing. John Senior loved boxing. So, uh, yeah, there's a lot of people like, I, to me, it's like an older sport. It's like with the MMA that came out, mm -hmm. it's a different type of sport. I think they took a lot away from the, the clout and the thunder of boxing. Of course, there's other gladiator sports that, uh, like that MMA, it's pretty tough. So I think that took a lot from the sport. But me, I, I, I didn't really don't have no heart for it. Yeah, I like Roberto Duran, Sugar Ray Leonard. My favorite, all time favorite. Really? I should like Eldo and Visage. It was a huge discotheque in Manhattan. Visage, huge. I held the uh, the Hagler Hearns fight, I believe it was. We charged like $100 to get in uh, there, like a uh, pay per view. We held it in the Visage nightclub. Forgot about that. And that was uh, probably 1985 if that's the right fight, around 1985, because I had the fruit store in Harlem, and I showed that. I have a picture at uh, Victor's Cafe right after that. I'll, I'll give you the picture. You don't think you'll like it. We can post it. Um, now, this next question is completely speculative, so you don't have to even answer if you don't want, but I asked you this personally, so I think it would be good for them to hear this if you want to answer it. Jackie Mills, following up on what uh, Jeff said, um, you weren't there, so you wouldn't know. But just on what you know about Jackie, um, do you think he was he really was heading that family at, at some point as the boss? Oh. Say that again. No. Nope. Um. And um, Let's see. I'll take one more question, and then we're going to get out of here. Um, let's see. Um, oh, there's a guy who makes a comment. Look at 413. Bob Cosmic, if I can read it right. Go ahead. Right, go ahead and read it. Go ahead. It says, the worst thing that could have happened to Sammy was that the start of no excuses. <laughs> Jeff Nadeau said that on his, on his show. He said that you haven't been good. He said, let's be honest, guys. Michael coming out and talking hasn't been good for Sammy. Jeff said that same. Jeff had that same perspective. Well, it, it's 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 a hell of a compliment. Of course, people are starting to believe uh, a different narrative uh, that breaks it down with more facts and uh, different scenarios of, of thinkings uh, in that life. You know, it, it, we're in a world of why should one v voice be heard? Not only, not this, just in life in general. In a marriage, the, the, should the wife always do the talk and let the other guy shut up? Or the, should the guy do the talk and the woman shut up? No, you need, you need, you need interaction. You need, 
you need a, a, a volume of information when it comes to historic facts, especially. You need to be cross-referenced cross -reference, cross and cross-fact-checked. So uh, if I'm here to do that, I am extremely flattered with you, RJ. I think you should be also, uh, you know, and, and, and the other contact makers that are coming out now and, and doing a deeper research, a deeper dive into Gravano's words and other people's words, and even mine. Fact check me all day. I challenge it. Uh, I welcome it. And if I'm wrong, I will admit it. I have no problem. But you got to show it. I tried to play the background like you were supposed to do when uh, John was off the street on the show. I'm trying to, I try to talk to you on the phone and not be so out front, <laughs> even though you tell me. But <laughs> so you're doing it, not me. <laughs> you're doing it too. You're right there. Right. Yeah, um, this thing about ten years, five years. I mean, uh, there's other guys that have it five years. One one guy said I was facing two weeks in the Bahamas. And I flipped. So uh, it's it's all misinformation. Like I stated earlier, there was never any deals thrown around. Some of the lawyers uh, would, would just banter around without talking about anybody. And I said, we're going to trial. Um, uh, like I said, I thought we had a great good shot to beat that case. Final question, guys. And a $20 channel donation um, from Benny Boombots. Yeah. Mike, did you ever meet Vito Antif Antifermo? He was a boxer. You don't know that? No, I don't know him. He's a champ. News to me. I didn't know. No. I'll look at it up. Okay. If you don't know, now you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to keep getting you with that one. Michael has a great story about Biggie. I'm not going to tell it. It's his story to tell. But there's an interesting story about Biggie that Michael will one day tell. <laughs> no, I'm talking about, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like Biggie. I think he was a. I think he was a defining moment in the black community. Uh, that was a uh, springboard into the white community. I think he he said some things that identify with that his way of life, where he came from. Uh, that's my opinion. Uh, he died too young. You know, I think he had a lot to offer as time went on. I really don't. Uh, this ain't a black thing that I'm I, just as a person and where he came from. Like I said, I'm not pandering. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I, um, no, vote for me and I'll set you free. Right. <laughs> no, I'm not running for any office. <laughs> um, man, I lost that comment. Did, did you know that guy that we were just. Oh, you know, yeah. No, I did not know him, but uh, then he won't Yes, uh, I'll tell you a story. And if you're still friendly with him, he came to Pastels one night. I think I did this on another show. I'm, I'm positive I did this. He came to pa Pastels one night, and he got in a beef with somebody. Street guy. And they went outside, and this guy broke Vito's ass. So uh, street fighting and boxing is two different things. But Vito was really well-liked. You know, he was a good guy. He was a good guy to his friends and his people. He never forgot from what I understand about him. I never met him. Uh, so, uh, and talked to him, of course. Guys, wow. <laughs> people don't, you know, people think that, when you know, there's two types of tired, I always say. You can be physically tired and mentally tired. People have to use their brain. It's a very exhausting, like, I feel winded after this show. Um, you got hundreds of comments coming in, all these, all this, and you know, your phone's going off with questions and you're following. I mean, if I could show you my desk, I have notes for the show and preparation and stuff everywhere. It's like, man, that was a long one. So <laughs> um, thank you guys. You guys are, I think we got the best live chat in the genre. That's my opinion. Don't get don't get in your feelings, anyone, because everyone should feel like their live chat's the best. So um, we don't have any wrenches. We don't have moderators. We don't really get people in here fighting and cursing us. Um, if I'm most proud of anything, Tom Michael is on the phone all the time. We built this channel up, and we're building this channel up. We don't, we don't make appearances. 
We don't do no marketing. No one helps us for the most part. We do it all here. We got, we, we're growing. Things are going well <clears throat> without attacking people, without putting people down and all that. Some consider the Sammy thing an attack. Okay, fine. I'll, at least I'll, I'll consider that one. But um, so thank you guys. I really appreciate everybody being here. Got almost 600 people in the live. I'm not sure what the viewership is yet. Um, so you guys are continuous supporters of ours. Please like and subscribe and share the show. Check us out on Patreon. A lot of good stories on there. Very great content on there. Um, you can join our Patreon for $9.99 a month. Gives you very intimate access with Michael. We make a lot of phone calls with people. We meet up with people. I just met up with one of our Patreon members. I had dinner with him at Spark Steakhouse. Um, so we have, we met people in Jersey. I met Patreon members. Great, great guy in Long Island who treated me very well, cooked for me. We talked for hours, drank wine together, talked about the old days and, you know, fantastic guy. So Michael met with people. Um, Junior has met with people. So we are an interactive channel. We like to get to talk, to touch people and talk with people. Um, whenever anyone's going through anything, any of our members have any personal problems, someone death in the family, anything, we, we call immediately. We reach out to people. Um, anyone you can be going through a problem at home and need some advice, we call. So um, this has all been great. Um, it's been very rewarding and it has gone much better than I even anticipated. So that's all I want to say. It's been a great show. Thank you, guys. Uh, thank you for all the great feedback. And, Michael, you close it out. Yeah. Uh, look, the Patreon family is a support group. It would, it would take us out of the equation. They interact. And when somebody wants to bring something, they need to vent or, or, or express something. We're there to support in every way. The good things and the bad things. So we have a really good thing on there with great people who really care about each other. And uh, that's what we really want to build there is uh, hopefully you two people could come on there if they want to be part of that. It'd be nice. Uh, but we take the time. If, if I, when I travel around, uh, whatever city I go to, I try to meet up with some people. You know, I'll ask, where, you know, are you in this area? And um, through the Patreon channel, of course. And I meet up with them. Checks on me. Checks on RJ. He don't know it. No, he knows. He's all, I'm only kidding. But look, as far as the attacks with RJ, Sam, he has no he, he has no interaction in his life with Sammy Gravano. I do, and whatever it is, with the, my feelings and my information about Sammy that comes from me. Leave RJ alone. Give it to me. Whatever he just want to say. No, I'm, what's that quote you said that about sitting on a post? <laughs> Can't sit on a fence. You want to know where to pick it up your ass. <laughs> You got to go on one side of the fence to the other. Don't fuck around. Uh, <laughs> look. So I'm here with you, brother. I'm on the other side with you. So there you yeah, go. Yeah, look, you be neutral. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I'll get you a nice board so the picket don't get you. <laughs> but thank you, man. Uh, it's very nice. You've been great, RJ, with everything you have done. And uh, you've been down the middle. And you, people don't know. They, they, on the side, when we talk before a show or just in general, you put some good questions to me. You question things. So, and then you formulate an opinion and a question sheet for me to, to, to go uh, and answer. So, look, we appreciate everybody on YouTube uh, and, and Patreon. So, uh, I want to say thank you very much for being here and listening to us and putting up with us at times. Uh, we do long lives um, and we appreciate you hanging around. So, God bless. Stay well. Peace and love.